everybody, it's Agnes and welcome to another interview in the Valentine series today. It's with Humphrey. Humphrey we have interviewed before, so he's back again and he's on holidays. Hello Humphrey. Hello Agnes, hello, Agnes. hello everybody. Um, I'm happy to be back and it's great pleasure and um, well I hope you enjoy this uh, this conversation that we're about to have. Yeah, wonderful. So let us know where you are in the world because you're actually on holidays in the, at the moment in a beautiful place. Where are you? Okay, well, I've managed to escape to um, uh, sunny places, uh, warm places of the islands, Spain, just off the coast of um, west coast of Africa, and I'm currently based in uh, the island of Gran Canaria and I've been here for the past three days now so I think I have another 10 11 days to go so plenty Beautiful. of fun ahead of me Woohoo! bit uh, <laughs> bit bit warmer than the UK at the moment <coughs> excuse me <laughs> oh yeah def definitely <laughs> definitely yeah well Let's do a little conversation about Valentine's Day and men and what do you really think about the whole thing? Oh, well, Valentine's Day is a difficult one. Well, at least always used to yeah. be difficult for me because, uh, you know, it would always be the time for me to remind me of the lack of uh, the love that I've been trying to find, you know, lack of lack of that special person, lack of that special someone in my life. Um, I think this year for the first time in my life, I'm not really even paying attention to the fact that Valentine's Day is coming. Uh, so I think that's, that's the best testimony of um, how good a place I'm, I'm actually at. <laughs> but mm. for, for most of the people, uh, I think for the people who normally struggle with uh, with coping with that time, particularly if they to spend it alone, that's that's the sort of effect that Valentine Day would um, normally have of them. Uh, my uh, my my thoughts from that would be uh, definitely try not to focus on it too much because that you know that, that naturally um, reinforces uh, again the feeling. Uh, of luck, uh, which is which is not a good thing. You don't want to be doing that. Uh, instead, try focusing on yourself and do something that you like. Spend this time with friends. Do something, um, something for fun, uh, mm. and don't necessarily focus on 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 the fact that you know if you're spending this time alone, don't don't really pay too much attention to it. That that would be my uh, advice yeah yeah I think it is such a time of um, I haven't I haven't got for for a lot of people when they're wanting a relationship or they've broken up or their relationship isn't going well it is such a uh, it can be a really great day or it can be a day of quite a lot of emotional pain unfortunately so I I think what you're saying is take the focus off it. If you're able to go and distract yourself, if you are someone that could fall in that emotional pothole to actually go and do things with other people to get your mind off it, I think that's a good thing. As a man, do you, do you feel the pressure, you know, with all the, the retail stuff that, you know, any time you go into a shop leading up to pretty much from the 1st of February all the way through to Valentine's Day, you know, anytime you go shopping, you're just bombarded with advertising for Valentine's. Do you find that's a pressure or you just don't care or you can ignore it? I think normally I would find this um, uh, putting me under quite a lot of pressure. Um, mm. uh, unlike any other time of the year, whilst um, when, when normally it's, it's ladies that get under pressure from, you know, this... Um, a commercial and retail point of view to, to buy stuff. Uh, unlike women, on Valentine, Valentine's Day, 
it's guys that get pressured to yeah to to make romantic gestures to to do stuff to buy stuff to uh, to make love confessions and all sorts of other things but i think uh, just going back to your previous point on yes i think you touched very important thing about difficulty of valentine's day um in relationships because i've read um an article at some point about um statistically how valentine's day um um throughout the year is is the time during which most couples actually split up the most ah. breakups actually happen statistically around um around christmas time then after new year and then just before and shortly after valentine's day and wow, it's surprising I didn't know that. <laughs> well that actually surprised me uh shocked me too when i first read it but when i got to think about it you know that actually actually makes perfect sense because yeah. there's a lot of pressure involved even if you are in a relationship yeah it does you know it's it's actually quite dangerous time for if you're in a relationship because yeah there's <coughs> say in a fresh relationship you know you're still trying to um to kind of you know find your way for being with that person with that you know um, special person of yours uh, you're trying to get to know each other and there's a lot of you know pressure on you to do something to show them how much you care how much you love them mm. and you know you end up in, instead of being natural instead of letting it flow um, in its natural way natural manner uh, you end up putting all that pressure on both yourself and your partner and pressure is a real killer for relationships believe me <laughs> i know yeah. something like that yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm yeah. speaking from experience here <laughs> yeah 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 that's yeah you learn that the hard way unfortunately i think yeah. most of us do most of us yeah. do fortunately yeah. human nature uh, uh, works in a way that we don't tend to learn from others <laughs> no. No. To learn from <laughs> mistakes of others you need to we need to make our own yeah exactly exactly <laughs> so yeah. yeah yeah well but commercially yes I, I think we we are under under a lot of pressure and mm -hmm. <clears throat> it's driven by it's driven by um companies by manufacturers by retailers because yeah. you know they simply want to make business of you and they don't mm. care about uh, your yeah. feelings, your love, uh, your well-being. They just mm. want to make a buck, you know. Yeah. And yeah. It's it's you know it, Valentine's Day. It's not a natural, um, excuse me, a celebration day uh, of of sort um, in our European culture. It's been invented by Americans who didn't know what to do in the middle of February and they came up with a Valentine's Day just to boost their sales because economically speaking that was yeah. the time when all their sales right after New Year went down so mm. it makes perfect sense if you think about it you know there is yeah. this bigger picture and there's, you know these bigger forces kind of trying to take advantage of people's feelings and emotions and try and drive you to buy and buy and buy and it just yeah. and it just becomes very very shallow and and pretty much stops meaning meaning anything you know yeah 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 so, no i i hear what you're saying and i think um so here's I'm the positive po note for everyone yes. in love yeah, <laughs> I'm sorry if we're spoiling the no, lovely. No, no, no. Uh, uh, it uh, uh, was meant to be uncensored because 
You know, men never get to talk about this. It's almost like it's this grenade. Like, like if I say the wrong thing about this, you know, so I just won't say anything. It's like men seem to move around just not mentioning it because it's like I don't want to go there because that's going to open a can of worms. And, and I thought, you know, men need to share how they really feel about this thing that happens every single year on the same day and it leads, you know, you just finish Christmas and then you get a breather for January and then there's this thing on the 1st of February. It's like, oh, you know, here it is again. <laughs> well, you, you don't have to worry about me holding anything back. Um, I'm, nope. I'm a, a pretty much human hand grenade, so I'll tell you anything <laughs> that will come to my mind without any um, any reservations. I, I, yeah. I'm just hoping we will not spoil this lovely no. day for everyone. Other There'll be some, some people left who will still enjoy it after our interview. Yeah. Yeah. Look, if you, you know, if you put love and fun and, and you don't come from getting, you know, because I think this is the big thing. So, and I will use women because it's my gender and I will speak on the behalf of the women I know and who the women I've known over the years there's so much pressure on men from women trying to get. And I just don't think that's fair. I think it's, you know, it's like you've got a, it's like that man I'm with or that man I want to be with needs to show me how much he loves me. And you're kind of standing there with your hands on your hips going, well, what are you coming up with this year? You know? And I think if we as women can, and this is for gay couples too, because you know I've heard it in in my gay friends. They have they have had the issues with this too. It's can I again come back to self love? Can I again come back to radiating love out and letting go, and just just know that you're loved. Treat your person whether you're with them, whether you're separated, whether you're. Um, you're having a period of it's not working very well, whatever it is that you go, okay, leading up to Valentine's Day this year, I'm not going to drive myself mentally crazy with pressure uh, on myself or on them. I'm just going to enjoy what, what, what I think Valentine's Day is really about is feeling loved. So if I can do that for myself, I'm going to generate that feeling. And you and I talked a little bit about, the the thing that you said about the mirror and and we'll talk about that in a minute but get your own self into a state of feeling loved use valentine's day as a positive thing i'm going to remember this is meant to be a day of romantic love let me be mindful to generate love within me and radiate that out to whoever i come in contact with on that day that would be a giving rather than a trying to get day so if, if mm. i could paraphrase actually because what you're saying makes so much sense Agnes. <clears throat> but if i can paraphrase it and almost um expand it onto saying that if you are to show um, um a special love uh, uh special attention if you were to pay any sort of special attention to anyone in your life on that very day, I should say in the first place, try and and, and show that love to yourself in the first yeah. place. Yeah. And when you do, when you feel loved by yourself, uh, then nothing else will actually matter. And exactly. Every everything will fall into place because yeah. you will feel loved by yourself first exactly, and then exactly. by by loving yourself at everything because in every interview that you do whether it's myself joe and yeah. others yeah we we all keep coming back in those interviews and yes to, to the subject of self-love and today isn't any difference you know it's yeah. it, it's it's self-love um, yeah but but obviously we're talking about Valentine's Day, but we still come back to self love. Once you fill that cup of self love yourself yeah. with your own love, with your own care about yourself, you can only mm. then 
start thinking about spreading and sending and radiating mm. that love onto others. Because yeah. before you do, you, you can't you can't pull the water into into an empty cup from an empty cup. You gotta fill your own cup first. Yeah, yeah. And I so and if, I think Humphrey, it's that thing of instead of going, oh, who's gonna give me something, who's gonna give me something, who's gonna give me something, you go, where can I extend my self-love out to people today and so you're completely changing the whole view of valentines you're going from getting to giving from getting to radiating it out and i think that can transform what actually happens to you that day absolutely uh, absolutely i mean i can i can give you an example of you know if, if we're talking pressure Obviously, you know, yeah. I've been there, I've done that, and you mentioned, you mentioned, um, uh, it's usually, um, it's usually ladies who put a lot of pressure on their partners. But yeah. I, I must say, from my personal experience, you know, I've I've come across guys uh, who can also be, you know, almost or sometimes as needy as and as as pressurizing us ladies can be in the relationships um yeah maybe on a few occasions you know i've been that kind of person myself too i don't know maybe not for me to judge but i have a suspicion that yeah you know we can and i'm also generalizing just now because i'm talking of my own sex uh, i can speak for myself but from my experience from my conversations with other males from with other f male friends i can I, I think i can tell you that we can also be quite needy and we can also uh, you know be putting a lot of pressure on our female partners and you know it particularly particularly shows on those special days like christmas new year's yeah. eve um valentine's day Etc. Etc. Mm. Well, th this is probably why the statistics show on these very days so many breakups actually occur. And it yeah. actually, if you think about it, it, makes perfect sense. You know, last year, for example, you know, I, I've been I've been in a totally, totally different frame of mind. I was in this relationship, which um, I, I I was starting to sense was going south yeah but i didn't know what to do about it and for valentine's day i came up with this super romantic gesture i uh, bought tickets and i took my special person up to the shard in yeah. london okay to, um to enjoy the view and a glass of champagne and basically just you know try and try and i've been trying to really force it you know and only right now it 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 actually it actually makes sense to me that what i was doing was actually not creating any sort of romantic atmosphere not creating any sort of you know romantic gesture or what I was doing was actually creating pressure. Well, uh, not not very long after the relationship ended. And, okay. You know, for very very long time, I actually struggled to understand why it's ended. It's a bit clearer. Well, it's a lot clearer to me now. <laughs> but yes, that you know that's that's you know a life experience, life life example of how can actually go wrong and mm. how actually trying to make this day super special just because someone called it valentine's day a yeah a, a love day doesn't really make much sense because if you're mm. really in love with someone you should try and make every day of your life a valentine's day you don't need an excuse to show your partner your love for them right yeah it's yeah. like it's it's the same what they say with birthdays 
I mean, when I was young, you know, we were celebrating birthday of my um, birthdays of of my mom, and obviously we we're trying to put on our best behavior. We we're trying to you know do special things for her and make her feel special. And someone someone said to me at some point, well, you know, you shouldn't really you shouldn't really only try to you know do these special things and and show this affection for your mom only on her birthday right you know you should do it every day of your life and it applies the same rule applies the same principle applies to to a relationship with you know with a romantic partner not just not just your parent because yeah if if you have this you know strong feeling strong feeling for someone you know you shouldn't only try and put that behavior and put that feeling on 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 one day a year mm. only yeah if that makes sense yeah for sure going back to going back to you buying those tickets to go up the shard in <laughs> london how did, what hap- what happened on that day was it a like did it go well or was it was a disaster <laughs> well it wasn't a total disaster but you know obviously in my mind uh, when i was you know making all these efforts you know i was i was automatically trying to you know predict the outcome and and i was i was writing and scripting these things that you know i would like to happen but all that was doing again it was on top of all that pressure that i've been putting on my partner yeah. I, I, you know, I've been putting a lot of pressure, internal pressure on myself too. Yeah. And, you know, what turned out was that my specific person didn't really even care about Valentine's Day at all because she didn't even celebrate it at all. It was like <laughs> a normal day to her. And, uh, and you know what? I mean, okay, you know, we went up the shard, we enjoyed the view. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, <laughs> But, but it was it was a day like like any other day to be perfectly honest yeah, uh, yeah. I mean in in the end we enjoyed it yeah but but this this only just shows that sometimes we're doing all these things because we think they're necessary while they they're really not because yeah. your partner may not even be expecting that yeah my in my instance, in my case, it, I created this all in my head because I thought, well, yeah. I have to do this. I yeah. need to make this gesture. I need to do this. I need to do mm-hmm. that. I need to impress mm-hmm. her. I need to yeah. sweep her off her feet. Well, <laughs> well, I didn't sweep her off her feet. Um, I, could, I, could, I could sense that she felt under pressure on yeah. that very night. Um, and you know, it didn't end in a disaster, but equally, it was far from that perfect imagined um, uh, imagined Valentine's Day, which you know, which which I had in mind, which uh, which fathers funders in America um, devised for me, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 <coughs> well, that's good. I mean, it's good to hear it how it really is, you know, because we are learning, growing in- individuals. And I think a big lesson with Valentine's Day and relationships at all, and a specific person or an ex or a new relationship, it still comes back down to the self love. And if you get that right, it's like that goes out and it touches everything in your life and the relationships flourish, the relationships change, the relationships improve. Um, people come back into your life. People step towards you because you're, there is nothing more attractive and magnetic than someone who's got good self-love and doesn't need love from out there. It's an energy that people feel. So 
I think it's coming back to that. If I can really work on my self-love and, oh, would you share the mirror thing now? Because that was really oh. significant in what, we were, <laughs> what we're talking about now. Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely. Well, uh, to, obviously for, for um, all the viewers who haven't participated in our pre, pre-recording conversation, uh, I'm just going to repeat what I said to Agnes uh, before we um, went on air. I was I was just sharing uh, my um, my latest um, experience with with my self love, and what I said was that recently I've managed to get to the point where um, you know I can wake up, go to the bathroom in the morning, and um, whilst me from man's back would have looked in the mirror and would have thought. Well, who the hell is that guy? You know, this ugly fucker. Uh, you know, who would love him? Who would want to like him? Who would want to be friends with him? Who yeah. would want to have a relationship with him? You know, and I would think that that me, you know, ten ten months back, me would have thought all these things. Well, now I, I get to the point where. I walk in that bathroom, I look in that mirror, and I can genuinely um, not really care about all these flows that I would previously notice in me, and I can simply just smile to myself, grin, (laughs) and and genuinely, you know, um, like myself, you know, and and it's an amazing feeling, and it's an amazing development in self-love that... Yeah. that you're able to do that because it makes you feel so good it does and what do you what do you think has contributed to that change when you see yourself in the mirror what sort of things do you think have really improved that i think that there is a combination of many factors well firstly obviously there's there's been plenty of uh, meditation and i've been doing um but meditation is only a technique to get you where you need to get. Uh, I think the, 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 one of the most critical things is, from my point of view, is letting go mm. and allowing. So, you know, if, if I said, you know, previously I would look at myself in the mirror and I would think all these nasty things about myself, you know, and I would... I would um, belittle myself in my own thoughts, you know. Yeah, I yeah. Undermine my qualities, my uh, my talents, my self worth, and all this. It would be happening, you know, in split second in my head, in my thoughts, and the effect it would take on on my subconscious would have been obviously very demoralizing and and devastating and and damaging. Yeah. So to to get to that you know allowing and and self love in place you you basically need to let go to let go. Yeah. You need to you need to learn to um to simply not care about certain things. Yeah. Not not care and um and really you know not feel needy but you you will only get to that place when you fill that cup which yeah. we mentioned before because if you if your cup is empty you you can't let go you know because you're still trying to fill it but you're looking in the wrong place because yeah. the, only, the only source that can fill your own cup is yourself yeah whilst Whilst what most people do is they're trying to fill that cup with feelings and emotions that they try and suck out from the outside. Mm. But that never works because yeah, because this just never, mm. never fills that cup. It's never enough. Yeah. The, on, the only love that will be enough is the one that you can find within. Yeah. So, Beautiful. I know it's, it's, 
so. <laughs> I think it's a complicated question and it's difficult to answer. And I think the answer will be different for everyone. Yeah. Uh, but, but, you know, there's no uh, one size fits all kind yeah. of recipe for success. And I think, uh, you know, it's, it's crucial that people experiment and they try different techniques and they, they practice self-love. But bottom line is, you know, look within yourself. Mm. And, you know, when you've started learning how to like yourself first, well, let's not even call it love yourself because before you can start loving yourself, you need to start liking yourself. Yeah. Which, once you've started liking yourself, you know, then, you know, maybe befriend yourself, okay? Mm-hmm. That's the second step. And, you know, once you've made friends with yourself, you know, yeah. maybe then you can gradually start loving yourself. You know, it's got to come yes. in baby steps. You know, it cannot yeah. happen overnight. Yeah. Uh, it would be difficult, you know, just just the same way as falling in love with someone really, you know, deeply and genuinely doesn't just happen split second. Mm. Okay. Yes. Uh, the same way you got to, you got to grow on your own self and you got to, you got to learn how to, how to be comfortable with, with yourself and your own skin, how to mm. accept your imperfections, how to yep. um, accept them how to let go of them and it's going to come in this very particular order and when you've done that when you've laid this ground work only then you can you know start liking befriending and then loving yourself and once you've got to that stage you know your cup will start filling up when it's full you won't feel the need to look anywhere else yeah because, because you know you will be loving yourself so when you don't feel that need is when you start letting go. And when you've let go, that's when, you know, world around you starts changing. Literally. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. And in all areas, in all <coughs> areas. All areas. All yeah. areas. And you wouldn't yeah. believe. I mean, I, I, mean I, I myself could give you quite a few really good examples you know yeah there's obviously you remember you know from our first interview how I manifested a pay rise so that's yes. been that's been going on for for a while now yeah and you know that's you know probably one of the reasons why I'm here right now on the lovely island of Gran Canaria I can treat myself you know and you yeah, know, I wasn't. I, I wasn't even specifically. Uh, I wasn't even specifically asking for, for uh, you know, money of, uh, or, or or any sort of you know financial. Um, financial rewards, yeah. in the manifesting process. No, it just came naturally. Yeah. I mean, I got yeah. to the point when, uh, when I thought to myself, well, what the heck? You know, I'm worth it. Yeah. I deserve it. I'm worth it. Yeah. Isn't that? What? A why moment. don't I just ask for it? Yeah, why don't I just ask for it? Yeah. And self-worth. Self-worth and feeling worthy. That's a big jump in self-worth. <coughs> Absolutely. And, you know, when the minute I got to that point, when I realized and I convinced myself that I was worth it, I deserved it, uh, it's, it's, it's like some sort of dam broke inside me. Yeah. Some sort of gate floodgates opened and and I've just said to myself what the heck I might as well just ask for it I went to my boss I've asked for it and yeah. then boom within within a space of hours yeah. I got a letter confirming a that's pay rise. right and didn't you get a pay rise for the other people in the office too if I remember correctly yes I actually yeah. did <laughs> yeah, actually, I'm going to put your interviews, well, because you and I have done a couple of interviews, I'm going to put your two interviews down in the description, because for those that want to hear that full story, it's such a great story. 
Oh yeah, that's 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 uh, yeah. yeah, that's a very good idea. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but you're right. You're right. I actually even forgot about that. I wasn't. Yeah. I was really thinking about it too much. But what's what's happened for those of you who haven't watched the first part of our conversation when I described the situation in detail was yeah. that not only I got the letter, but also pretty much hundred percent of all the rest of the employees also got their letters confirming confirming <laughs> pay increase, which was fantastic because beautiful. Well, you know, hey, I was you know, I was looking after myself and <laughs> and yeah. you know, trying to better my own situation, but in process uh, you know, I've actually contributed to betterment yeah. of of other situation too. Yeah, that's fabulous. <laughs> so it's it fabulous. Felt, it felt really, really rewarding and amazing. Yeah, yeah, that was a good that was a good manifestation of going from well, not that you were feeling unworthy before, but you were working on your self worth over time, and that was the cherry on the cake. Of course, it was. Yes, and that yeah. was that, that's actually happened around the time when. Um, when my self worth and um, and self love started um, skyrocketing, so to speak, uh, it started really increasing rapidly over that period of time, and um, and that was probably one of the very first um, signs that things can change, and that they are changing. The minute you yeah. change your inner game things do change around you. Yeah. Another, yeah. another very recent, um, uh, very recent um, example of um, of um, the world changing around you, which, which we mentioned, uh, which I actually shared with you uh, privately a couple of weeks ago, it was very unexpected thing to me. Uh, what happened was that a person um, from whom I haven't heard for years, uh, with uh, with whom I've had a really nasty falling out, and we're not talking about my specific person. That's that's another person, uh, yeah. a close relative, um, uh, with uh, with whom I had a nasty nasty falling out and the end of um, well our <coughs> relationship, so to speak. Um, a person reached out for me. Um, just recently, out of the blue, totally unexpected. So what's happened previously, what, what, what caused this whole upset and, uh, and the um, burned bridges, because we have effectively burned all the bridges. You know, we've said mm. some nasty words to one another. Um, uh, we, we haven't spoken since. Was, um, was the fact that, you know, I... I lend this person quite substantial sum of money in good faith. I was trying to help, um, yeah. and you know we, we made a gentleman's agreement that you know this person was going to pay me back in such and such time, and I trusted them because they were my family. Yeah, and the the person, in short words, not to make it too long, the person basically stole my money and never. Yeah. Did never paid it back yeah that, that's caused the whole upset and mm -hmm. and loss of uh, loss of contact yeah so I basically written off this money I wasn't really expecting to get it back anymore so so I have written off this person and then all of the sudden a few weeks ago this person has reached out for me uh, Telling me they want to pay me back, and I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> I, I honestly wasn't expecting that. And, wow! And that was that was amazing. That feeling was uh, absolutely amazing. So, so, so have they paid you back already? Yes, they have. They have the whole thing. Yes. The no whole way. The whole outstanding sum, they paid me back. And what did you say to them? Well, I said thank you. Well, you know. <laughs> yeah, I said thank you. Well, no, no. What I said was, what took you so long? 
<laughs> yeah, what took you so long? No, did they no, apologize? Did they apologize for the No, shows? no, we didn't know no. actually what's happened was they reached out for me asking for my um my bank details so they could send yeah. bank transfer. I wow. sent my details back to them mm. and then in a few days time they send me the money back and that's concluded our communication because you know i yeah. still think yeah you know certain things have been said i don't need to yeah i don't need to drag this out into daylight again i don't need to upset yeah. myself yeah i in my own inside inner self i've pretty much forgiven this person yeah i don't you know i don't feel any any particularly nasty feelings for for this person anymore but equally yeah. uh you know i'm not dying to get in touch and you know mm. make up at all no. but it was a good first step wasn't it like it's a it sort of cleaned up something you know what's interesting is this happened two weeks before your holiday yes good timing <laughs> isn't it Good you timing. must have the belief. You must have the belief. I have. I have good timing. <laughs> yes, that's wonderful. And, and but, it's like money's just coming at you from work, from this. It's like you, your self love is not holding back money. It's money's coming in. That is wonderful. <laughs> oh yes, yes. And you know, in fact, I'm now, uh, you know, trying to work out a. A nice deal on the on the new job. So, uh, not that yeah. I'm doing any particular manifestation or, or or you know focusing too much deliberately on finding a new job. But yeah, uh, you know, uh, you know, I'm kind of prepaving, <laughs> sort yeah. of doing some you know mind preparation as to you know imagining how my new job would be and what I would like it to be. And, you know what sort of changes I would need to make in order for it to happen. So I'm yeah. kind of in the process of working on this new <laughs> side project, so to speak. Uh, <laughs> side and... project. <laughs> <laughs> well, side. I, I call it, I call it side project because you know still the main uh, manifestation goal remains um, unaltered. You know, but but you know. I'll see where it takes me. Mm. And you know Hopefully. what I remember, Humphrey, was <coughs> you was you telling me that you were at work and you were angry and you had issues at work cuz they 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 said something to you about how you were at work and you were angry because you were stressed because of a breakup and all that going on and that you didn't enjoy going to work and in that you transform that. I remember you saying to me, I'm really enjoying my job. I'm getting on with everybody. So you totally transformed. You didn't change jobs. You just started to give to your job and you started appreciating your job. And I love watching that transformation. It was wonderful. Uh, yes. Well, on that note, however, um, obviously, I must say that you need to, well, one, you need to remember to um, to watch the limits of giving um, uh, as to you know how much they want to give to a job and also applies to another person and that leads yep. me to to this other thing I'm not I'm, I'm not even sure if I mentioned that obviously I was enjoying myself in that job a lot doing new things getting on with people a lot better than I used to previously Unfortunately, it got to the point where I, I think I must have overdone it and physically um, my body took such a strain that I started uh, coming down with back problems, some serious yeah. back problems. Yeah. Effectively, uh, pretty much almost whole of December, I spent on uh, sick leave trying okay. to get better. Yeah. Okay. Excuse me. So I've been going to a chiropractor three times a week, um, basically exercising a lot, doing a lot of physio. Um, yeah. 
and quite clearly this was the effect of me overdoing certain things. Okay, I, I think I might have also uh, let this slip a little bit with my self-love and stuff mm. because th there came the point uh, when at work things have returned to a stressful uh, old self. Yeah. Uh, and this actually, I think this actually manifested uh, these health issues but then i think what's happened was over christmas i regrouped i regathered myself i um, uh, refocused on um, getting enough self-love into myself mm -hmm. as dodgy as it may sound <laughs> i uh, yeah and i think it started uh, i think it started helping me because I got really scared when these problems yeah. appeared yeah. because I previously five years ago been through a spine surgery, ah. same area, same problem with my desk. Uh, yeah. I have a desk job, so naturally it doesn't help with uh, mm. with your back. And because of that history of the same problem, and because of how it's how it's ended. I was really scared that it would come to surgery once again. Yeah. So I was in that very scared frame of mind, fueling my thoughts with fear predominantly yeah. during this, uh, you know, few weeks period in December. Yeah. But then I, I, I consciously took a decision to stop thinking that way, and then instead yeah. I started thinking positive. And then within, well, I I don't want to say within a few days because it, it it wasn't as fast as that, but within a very, very short period of time, things started improving with my lower back, really. Mm -hmm. And I'm nearly, I'm nearly out of it now. And the, uh, the possibility, the risk of surgery has gone away. Beautiful. So, yeah, uh, yeah. I think I think you know one thing people tend to overlook, and um, and talking about self love is also looking after yourself in the physical domain. Yeah. So not not only just you know keep repeating to yourself that you love yourself, that you mm. <clears throat> that you're deserving, that you're worthy, but also show it to yourself. To yeah. your physical being, to your body, mm -hmm. show it to your yeah. body that you love it and look after it. And by looking after it, I mean, you know, get some proper rest, get some decent yeah. sleep, yeah. get some get some healthy food in your system, exercise, and keep your body mm. healthy and fit yeah. and strong. And all sorts of other things, and yes, meditate. That's part of that's part of looking after yourself. Meditate and and reflect on yourself. But mm. eat well, sleep well, um, rest well, mm. exercise. You know those three, four things. They also a very key part of 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 loving yourself. A mm. physical manifestation of loving yourself and people yeah. tend to forget about it you know and and, and then they, they keep saying well you know but I, I keep repeating those mantras to myself why is it not working well yeah. bloody hell you know because well start eating well start looking after yourself you know and, yeah and start start doing what you preach you know <laughs> exactly right i agree with you you know Humphrey, last night when I went to the dinner in the desert, you know, at, at the at the Aboriginal Rock and we were all out there and I was sitting at this table um, with all these people and there was a woman there. They'd literally just flown in that day. They were at this thing last night, which finished at about 10.30. We didn't get back to the hotels till about 11. Um, and then she was getting up 
with her husband and they were doing a sunrise thing, which meant they had to get up at three thirty, four o'clock in the morning. And I, and she said, oh, are you doing the sunset? Are you doing the sunset thing? I said, no, I said, I'm not, um, I'm not a morning person. I'm not doing any morning stuff. I'm doing all the night stuff because in the middle of the day, you kind of need to lay low cause it's so hot. So, and I thought, she says, oh, she's, I said, no, I like to sleep. I said to her, I like to sleep in. And she says, oh, no, I'll sleep when I'm dead. And I thought, <laughs> okay, uh, you know, and, and she was carrying quite a bit of weight. And I just thought, you know, when, when we do not care for ourselves, like she's going to bed really late, she's getting up really early, she already looked quite tired because she's been on the go on this tour for, you know, of Australia for I don't know how long. But it's, that, it's what you're talking about is you have to make time for rest and you have to make time for, you know, sleeping. You have to make time for exercise and you've got to, you know, out here you need to drink at least half a litre of water every hour here. <laughs> If you're outside, you go, you get dehydrated so quickly. And, and I was thinking, oh, you know, I would have looked at that in the past, someone saying that to me, and I would have thought, oh, maybe I should get up and do that. I'm, you know, I'm not doing enough while I'm here because I'm laying by the pool a lot. I'm sleeping in in the morning and then I'm working in between. And, but I heard that and instead of feeling like, oh, maybe there's something wrong with me, I should be going out and doing that too, I thought, oh, no thanks. My self-love likes to sleep in and then I can enjoy the day and I'm rested, you know. So it was a good moment to see uh, just that change in how I respond. I didn't say anything. I said, oh, well, that's good, you know, enjoy yourself and, and left it at that. But I remember thinking, oh, that to me, for me, doing a late and then, you know, they were drinking alcohol and stuff last night and yahooing and, and I thought, alcohol plus going to bed late plus waking up early in the morning that would just crush my self-love I would feel rotten so it was just good it's just good to see when you are doing your self-love you know people are at different doing different things and that's totally fine I don't know this woman and I'll never see her again but I thought that for me would be abuse that would to me would be self-abuse if I did that to myself and these days you know, I'd rather do it the turtle way where I, you know, I'm here for five days. I'm doing something every day. Might be just be for an hour or two. Today it's the painting, the dot painting, Aboriginal painting with an Aboriginal woman. Probably go for a couple of hours. But then I'm by the pool. I'm relaxing. I can have an afternoon sleep. You know, I can do some of my work, my YouTubing or whatever. But it's at a calm pace all day, the five days. It's calm, it's relaxed. And that, to me, maintaining that and making my choices from that, it means my body is in a good state. It's, it's not using its reserves. It's you're topping up your energy. You're not going to zero all the time. And I used to live on zero and minus and that's how I ended up with glandular fever. That's how I ended up with a torn hamstring. That's how I ended up with a tumor, you know, because I would go not just to zero in my energy, I would go into the minus and try and function from that place. And then I got a lot of illnesses and sicknesses. So these days, sort of hovering around 10, you know, if it starts dropping down to five, I go, okay, I've got to make the change now before I drop to zero. And you're just much more able to conserve energy rather than use it up. And it reminds me of um, there was something in Neville Goddard where he said, I think it was Neville, where he said, you, you invest your time, your money, and your energy. See it as an investment, not as something to use and use up, you know. So, yeah, so there you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and what what you said about um, slipping you off after after you're dead rings a bell yeah. because <laughs> I've I've also heard people say that to yeah. other people and to myself, and you're yes. absolutely right. Um, the previous previous me, uh, the 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 previous very competitive uh, uh, me who would put a lot of strain on himself to to 
to do all sorts of you know yeah. activities you know stay fit and uh, you know I'm I'm really into cycling as as you know uh, I yeah. mean, our, our viewers don't but but you know just just to um, just to give him a, a, a taster uh, I used to be a very competitive cyclist I still am a cyclist although haven't cycled for maybe approximately six months for all sorts of various reasons um, but that previous me would follow the same uh, the same yeah. you know path as as old you I would, mm. I would cave in under this pressure because yeah. what, what what it creates is, is a pressure that yes you gotta stay and keep up with, with keep with up people. yeah K yeah keep up but you, yeah. you know what it is yappies invented it it's not natural you know it's it's yappies again our american friends invented it <laughs> I'm 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 slugging off Americans tonight, but I I I don't have anything against them. Americans are lovely people. Uh, I've met plenty of them and I've worked with them before. And when I visit America, they they, in most cases, you know, they they lovely people. But anyways, I'm I'm digressing here. <laughs> uh, yeah, so old me would have caved under this pressure, and would have yeah. again similarly to this lady from from your holiday. Old me would have forced himself to get up early in the morning after yeah. maybe like a, a heavy drinking night night before. Yeah. He would have forced himself to get up and jump on his bike and train himself and drain himself to minus ten level of energy just mm. because because there's no time to waste. There's yeah. um, there's, there's you know it's you you shouldn't really. You know, allow yourself to to spend a day in bed or whatever, mm. um, and also I'd be very competitive and I'd be trying to stay fit and super, um, you know, and super, you know, high shape. Right yeah. now, for you know all sorts of reasons, which I'm not going to go into because I haven't been cycling, uh, because of you know these health, uh, some health issues. Uh, some of them are, are, are mentioned these back problems you know I haven't cycled yeah. I put on some weight yeah and you know old me <clears throat> as I said earlier and I, you know I'm coming back to the mirror thing yes. I would have I would have felt I'm probably not going to exaggerate if I say I would have felt disgusted by yeah. present me you know I would have not accepted the way mm. I, I look, I would have not felt comfortable in my body. However, right now, I'm feeling well. <laughs> I, I don't really care. <laughs> as, as, as long as yeah. long as I'm comfortable in my own skin, nothing yeah. else matters. And yeah, and you can, and you can, when you come from that place. You can easily lose the weight again. You can because you're coming from loving yourself. So the weight just drops off when you get back. Your health issue dissolves, and you go back to, you know, oh, you're, you're, and you just go, okay, I'm just in transit. It's okay, and you stop the self criticism. Oh, and I've definitely stopped uh, criticizing myself, and yeah. you know, you know, previous, previous myself, you know, even two years ago when I first. Um, First, well, not first. When I when I came to um, Gran Canaria uh, previously, you know, um, and I was like maybe 10, 15 kilos less than I what I am right now. Yeah. I went out to the beach on one occasion because you know maybe ten out of eleven or twelve days I spent cycling across the mountains, right, and, yeah. and basically kill, killing myself. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but but on on the very day that I went to the beach, you know, I took off my shirt, and even though I was like 10, 15 kilograms lighter than what I am right now, I still yep. felt uncomfortable taking yep. off my shirt and and basically, <clears throat> uh, you know, showing off my my body. Um, yeah. Whilst yeah, right now, <laughs> as I said, 10 maybe 15 kilos more, mm. uh, and two years down the line. Uh, you know, I spent a super 
super lovely day on on the beach yesterday relaxing all day uh just you know drinking margaritas and enjoying myself uh and my shades and uh, you know under umbrella yeah um, isn't and, that feel great that just feels yeah, it's it such a feeling of and i had absolutely abundance no, yeah. yeah and i had absolutely no problems doing that you know absolutely no problems firstly relaxing and not forcing myself to to, yeah. you know, to drag my fat ass across these you know super high and exhausting mountains instead yeah. instead today um because because I, I have a car rented for the whole duration of my stay here i jumped yep. in the car and i drove around the whole island and i yeah. took like maybe maybe million of photographs fabulous uh, absolutely amazing views and it just gave me such an amazing kick of energy such a buzz because views were spectacular and, and normally uh, i've experienced something that i would have never experienced if i was on my bike because i'll be as i said i'll be killing myself you know i'll be training i'll be like you know pretending yeah. to be a pro and you know, <laughs> living living out my <clears throat> unfulfilled dream of becoming some sort of pro athlete you know and yes. also this com competitive me would be you know taking over and and dictating how i should spend my home yeah. day productively whereas exactly. now yeah now i'm just i'm just chilled you know and i know instead of killing myself for, for yeah. the whole 10 days i just drove around the island you know stopped for a nice uh, nice drink in one place for lunch somewhere else you know took plenty of photographs explored and discovered so many places i never even knew existed on this island mm -hmm. only because mm -hmm. i they were either too far for me to cycle there or they were you know along the the trails which i couldn't follow on my road bike uh, yeah so like off beat trails and yeah and I've, I've just discovered this amazing amazing rocky you know volcanic rock beach this morning yeah and yeah it was just absolutely amazing so again another part again come, come coming back to looking after your physical self yeah for me being here right now doing what i do and how i do it and enjoying myself so much is also a, a part of loving myself experience ah, so is so is and what's great when you're on a holiday on your own like you are and like i am it's like you you talk to people and you go, you can go with the flow. Like you wake up and you go, okay, what do I feel like doing today? And you just look at what activities are on and then you go, you know what? I don't feel like doing any of that today. I'm just going to, like you did, just get in the car and drive and take photos. So oh, exactly. by yourself, it's fantastic when you've got nothing booked, you know, like I didn't book anything until I got here. And, and then um, I thought, wow, I feel like doing that tomorrow. Let me look at it and let me book it. And, and then I sat at a table with a whole bunch of people from all different countries and, you know, we had kangaroo for dinner and we had, um, <laughs> um, what else did we have? We had, um, did you well, have you know, a crocodile? <laughs> no, there was crocodile ribs, um, in one of the cafes nearby. So I might have, I might try that today cause I haven't had crocodile for a long time. So there's <laughs> crocodile and there was emu hors d'oeuvres, like literally, I don't oh. know what that was. The thought oh of chopping God. up a, an emu, I thought, but the Aboriginals do eat, you know, they eat everything. So all the animals that are here, they either eat, you know, the eggs or they eat the actual animal. And, and kangaroo, there's so many kangaroos in Australia. It's, it's actually a bit of a, a pest, apparently, that there's just too many. So oh my God. we do you... eat kangaroo burgers. So <laughs> <laughs> I definitely need to come and visit this. I know. Right? It's funny it's so funny but you know i always thought of you australians as as of civilized people but you you tend to be you turn out uh, to be savages you eat kangaroos yes. they're such <laughs> they're such friendly they're such friendly animals and you eat them 
Shame on you. Yeah, I know, I know. So we do what we do eat, you know. We're carnivores eating eating the meat. So. Oh my god. Yeah. And I've been I've been here so long, like I'm I'm just constantly having to put because you everything's so dry. It's like I woke up this morning just before I, I hopped on with you. I thought, oh my god. My lips are like a koala's bum. It's like they're so dry <laughs> out, <laughs> dry little crunchy lips. I thought, I'm, I'm not, gonna get. <laughs> no, I'm not even. I'm not even gonna ask how you know <laughs> how the texture of koala's bum. Oh, it's just a bit. It's just uh, an assumption. <laughs> oh, okay, let's let's leave it at that. We'll leave it at that. Well, we've been talking for an hour, so we better um, oh, yeah, let's, let's wrap it up. End it. Oh, my God. Talking to you. We could talk for hours. It's brilliant, brilliant, well, brilliant. Same, Thank you. Same here, Agnes. Thank you yeah. very much. And uh, yeah. thanks to uh, all our viewers for yeah. for watching this interview. Hopefully, we haven't yeah. bored you to death. No, uh, I think uh, there's such good nuggets, self-love nuggets in this interview, Humphrey. I think that is really... You know, Valentine's Day aside, coming back to all that self-love stuff you've shared and how you apply it and where you were and where you are today and then the money coming in, it's like it just shows the results. And I think this is the thing. Law of attraction can be a bit of a fuzzy target where people go, well, what do I do and what does it do and how does it work and how is that going to give me relief? But when we have an interview like the one today with you, where people show where they were, what they're doing, how they continue to do their self-love on a daily basis, letting go of the stuff that doesn't work mentally, which then impacts you emotionally better, <coughs> Excuse me. then you see results. And, and that's the thing. People want relief. And you have got relief over this journey of quite a short amount of time, really. So well, I think, you know, if I may say, I think I've gotten much more than just the relief. Uh, yeah that's the most exciting thing about it because uh, you know initially when i embarked on this journey it, it was with a short-sighted focus at getting something and again you know even, yeah. even the initial goal and I, I, I the way i see it now appears to me as if it was ill-defined because it was coming from the place of luck and i was defying my goal um with with uh, getting something from the mm. outside and th this definition the definition of the, the 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 goal the target of this journey has evolved so much since i've embarked on this journey that it, it absolutely amazes me and it fills me with so much joy mm. Mm. and excitement because um as much as i know uh, I know that what's to come is going to be good. You know, you can never be certain. And there's, you know, this level of, slight level of uncertainty, but it's a positive uncertainty. And it's, it's, it's a confidence that's what's, um, what's around the corner, what mm. is, is going to be good. And yeah. may not necessarily be exactly what I've asked for specifically but it doesn't matter because <laughs> ultimately you know, it's gonna make me happy yeah but uh, and yes I know we've talked for a long while but <laughs> just <clears throat> one quick thing I yeah and I hope this is gonna benefit some or or maybe a lot of your viewers speaking of self-love I have um, a couple of very useful tips um, and and um, uh, pointers for uh, for self love practitioners. Again, yes. it, it, it sounds quite um, disturbing <laughs> to an English speaking ear. But anyway, um, not sure if you've heard of uh, an author called Greg Braden. Yes, ever heard of him? Yes. Yes, I think we've mentioned him in in a previous chat, but. Um, he, I think he's just recently released a book called um, Divine Matrix, uh, where he explains perfectly um, the connection between the spiritual world and 
what I'm a huge fan of, the theory of quantum mechanics and yeah. how how we can explain all these um, all these um, things happening in our world with the laws of physics um, applied creatively, obviously, because we can't prove these things just yet. But but yeah. you know, there are experiments being developed to actually you know prove these things, and they're starting to happen. And he's explaining these things perfectly because you know he himself comes from scientific background. So yeah. I think you know he's he's a very reliable source and he knows what he's talking about. But also for practicing self love, uh, I would say um, a meditation uh, called I am meditation um, by um, Wayne Dwyer. Yeah. Um, or late Wayne Dwyer. Because he's obviously not with us anymore, but yep. his work still lives until present day. And I found I've, I've um, come across his work some time ago, and I started practicing this particular I am meditation. Yeah. Um, and I think this is a very very good one, and it does miracles. Uh, I've implemented a few uh, personal modifications, so. When um, you repeat mon mantras saying I am, I am, um, instead of using adjectives and saying I am loved, I am wealthy, I am healthy, um, I tend to follow um, Wayne Dwyer's advice and use nouns and instead say I am wealth, I am health, I am love. And my, by my thinking that should hopefully work a little bit better because if you describe yourself by an adjective it yep. imp implies that you're an effect of something effect of a state that you pass through whilst yes. if you use a noun it means you are it right yeah yeah second secondly obviously i always tend to use positive positive um um, expressions so whatever um, whatever negative statement wants to comes through my mind I always try and find positive opposite and mm -hmm. never say I am not something I am not something mm. I find something opposite to it and then use yeah. it and also I find my statements mm -hmm. and I actually say them in my head or whisper to myself because when you force yourself to actually generate thoughts in your head in your mind that's the, yeah. the most powerful creative process and it's so much more powerful than simply just listening to guided meditations um, and yep. yep. instead of passively listening to something you're creating it in your head Absolutely. and then all the statements that you say or think in your head I try and make them connected. So, for example, everyone, I try and be in some way connected to the previous one. So, they tend to, in that way, they tend to flow naturally. So, yeah. there, there, there can be this flow of statements that flow through my mind and I can just keep going on and mm. I can do it for hours. Yeah, no, and that no, music, you... that I am music is so great because you can overlay whatever you want to do mentally exactly. over that music. It, I used that for about 18 months every day, that music. It just, I couldn't stop. It was so powerful. I'll put it in the description because it's exactly. brilliant. Exactly. I've mentioned it before, but I, I'm glad to hear you're using it because it's got some ancient resonance, that music. There's something very, very profound about that music. There are two versions of that video online. There is a shorter and longer one. And the longer yep. one, um, Wayne Dwyer actually explains how you yes. should do it. And then yes. what what the music is and how it was composed. Yep. Uh, so it would be probably worth putting in the, the link to the longer one. So longer viewers can version. Actually, yeah. yes, benefit right. from that, you know, Wayne Dwyer's description and, and guidance himself good idea and, and i think that's 
that's the end. We need to stop because otherwise we're going to we're going to keep talking all night <laughs> or all day in your case. And it's and it's really really late at your end. It's nearly it's over past midnight at your end, isn't it? Oh yeah, probably probably all nearly, nearly all, close to 1 1 a.m. Oh. Oh, oh my god. All my all my neighbors in my hotel are going to kill me in the morning. <laughs> Cuz I'm, cause I'm still out on out. Yeah, I'm sitting out on my balcony talking <laughs> talking through my headphones. <laughs> so so as it turns out the whole hotel got a free lecture on self-love. There you go. Free lecture attending it from your own the own comfort of your own room. <laughs> perfect. Perfect. Oh, well, thank okay. you. Mom. That's lovely. I'm so glad to have spent this time with you. Lots of great stuff in there. And um, I'll put all the links down below for everything we've talked about. Thank you. Thank you very much, Agnes. And to okay. all the viewers, once again, thank yeah. you for watching. And, uh, well, see you later and good luck in your all your personal journeys. Bye-bye. Beautiful. And I'll, I'll stop recording and we can say bye in private. Okay.